Hello, Booktube. Sorry once again for the extremely strained winter light. There's virtually no light today at all. It makes yesterday seem bright. So as a result, uh, I'm doing my best to compensate. Every light in the house is on. <laughs> with uh, with apologies to Blackhawk. <laughs> Wasn't it Blackhawk? Sarah would probably know. <laughs> Every light in the house is on, and everything is gone. <laughs> she left me no chance at redemption, <laughs> no further exemption. Just a big red goodbye and lipstick on the wall. Goodbye says it all. <laughs> anyway, all the lights are on here. I'm trying to compensate. We've got a little mail to go through. Uh, well, just three packages here. We'll see what we have. Not anything like the monstrous obscenity that we had yesterday. Uh, what is this first one? I've also had a couple of good uh, comments about the video quality. I know, most of you know that the video quality is not anything to expect here, but I do want you to be able to ra vaguely see what I show you and also vaguely hear me. And I think this is okay for now. We'll, we'll hope for the best. There's tons and tons of technical apologies until the sun returns to Boston. <laughs> so, oh, fantastic. Okay, great. Wonderful. This is the finished copy of something that we've seen already. This is Last on His Feet, Jack Johnson and the Battle of the Century. Art by Yusef Daudi and Poetics by Adrian Matejka. This is the finished copy. A nice naked hardcover there, full of artwork that is mostly black and white with tones of red. That's mostly what it is. Which is kind of an interesting choice on its own right. Right, that the that the color that we're seeing is red. It's terrific, though. I I couldn't wait with the uh, when this year started. I couldn't wait with the advanced copy that I had, and now I get to experience it in the way that all the readers will. Boy, oh boy, fantastic! About a celeb. Well, actually, let's read about it a bit for those of you who might have missed it the first time. Uh, on the morning of July 4th, 1910, thousands of boxing fans stormed a newly built stadium in Reno, Nevada, to witness an epic showdown. Jack Johnson, the world's first black heavyweight champion and most infamous athlete in the world because of his race, was paired against Jim Jeffries, a former heavyweight champion then heralded as the Great White Hope. It was the height of the Jim Crow era, and spectators were eager for Jeffries to restore the racial hierarchy that Johnson had pummeled with his quick fists. Transporting readers directly into the ring, artists Yusef Daudi and poet Adrian Matejka interspersed dramatic boxing action with vivid flashbacks to reveal how Johnson, the self-educated son of formerly enslaved parents, reached the pinnacle of sports, all while facing down a racist justice system. I uh, liked the look of this as an innovative way to tell the story, and boy, oh boy, uh, it was. I am very much looking forward to rereading it with great attention. I don't have any information on it. There's no information in the envelope either. No, that's kind of odd. Um, but I think this is a February release. I will certainly be reviewing it. <laughs> that's for sure. On the newly revived Open Letters Review. What is this next one? Let's see what we have here next. One of these cardboard packages. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to shift gears a little here. <laughs> Let's get extra paperwork out of the way. This is a romance. This is a January 24th release. This is called Make a Wish by Helena Hunting with uh, the cartoon, the vague, bad cartoon, computer generated, I firmly believe, cartoon cover that is now all but ubiquitous in the romance, in the romance genre. Aside from uh, a diehard holdout of historical Regency romances in mass market paperback, otherwise uh, it's all this, these these dumb cartoon covers. Uh, let's see here. Ever, ever have a defining life moment you wish you could do over? Harley Spark has one. Her name is Harley is Haley Sp Harley Spark. Her name is Harley Spark. The name of our main character is Harley Spark. She has one. The time she almost kissed the widowed father of the toddler she nannied for. It was so bad they moved across the state and she never saw them again. Fast forward seven years and she's totally over it. At least she thinks she is. Until Gavin Rhodes and his adorable now nine-year-old daughter Peyton reappear at a princess-themed birthday party hosted by Spark House, Harley's family event hotel. Despite trying to avoid the awkwardness of the situation, she can't help but notice how unbearably sexy he looks in a tutu. 
Add to that a spontaneous hives breakout, and it's clear she's not even remotely over the mortification of her egregious error all those years ago. Why does Spark House ring a bell? Uh, is this a series? Again, Sarah would probably know. Uh... Well, this author is, is extremely prolific. She wrote the Shacking Up series. One of which, Shacking Up, the first book in the Shacking Up series, I'm thinking I have in this room. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I do. The Lakeside series, the Pucked series, Clipped Wing series. No mention of whether or not this is also a series. Maybe this, maybe I'm just remembering this from an advancement notice. But this is, this is right around the corner. This is coming up right away. So this will go on the list. Actually, uh... This will go on the list for tonight. This and also uh, Last on His Feet, which is, I'm pretty sure it's a February release, but I want to read it again in the finished copy anyway. Okay, great. So we have a graphic novel and a romance. And then we've got one more package here, and then we'll be done. The video does not have to be long, especially when there's no light at all. What is this next one that we will just tear apart here? We'll just tear it apart, throw the pieces aside. Oh, okay. All right. Well, if there's one thing you know already when you watch this channel, it's that you can expect variety. And we're getting it in this one mail hall, because we have gone from a graphic novel about a turn of the 20th century boxing match to a contemporary romance about an, an older single dad in a tutu to Marcel Proust. <laughs> this is uh, the new Penguin Classic Deluxe Edition of Finding Time Again. This is a new translation by Ian Patterson. And it is uh, the, uh, it's going to tell me here, it's the final volume in, in the Penguin Classic Deluxe Edition. They've done an, actually a beautiful set of these. The Penguin Classic Deluxe Editions have the, the deckled edges. They have the French flaps. They're really well done. And they have now done all of Proust. All of Proust is now out in paperback for them. I imagine that probably you lucky folks in the UK have access to a box set of all of them. It should be a thing to have. It really would. I have one Proust box set of the Moncrief translation in three volumes when it was called Remembrance of Things Past. This is worth getting. I don't know how many of these I have, which is kind of scandalous. I'm pretty sure I have the first one. I, I don't know if I have them all. I might not. Uh, well, let's, let's read a little about poor Marcel, shall we, in his cork-lined room. Uh, Ian Patterson's acclaimed new translation of Finding Time Again introduces a new generation of American readers to the literary riches of Marcel Proust. The seventh and final, okay, there we go, the seventh and final volume in the Penguin Classic's superb new edition of In Search of Lost Time, the first completely new translation of Proust's masterpiece since the 1920s, brings us a more comic and lucid prose than readers of English have previously been able to enjoy. <laughs> Maybe because it's not there. <laughs> uh, in this volume... Marcel discovers his world destroyed by war and those he knew transformed by the march of time. Uh, an exquisite picture of France in the throes of the First World War and containing, in one sequence, one famous sequence, uh, one of Proust's most devastating set pieces. Finding Time Again triumphantly describes the paradox of facing mortality yet overcoming it through the act of writing. Uh, and that, that bit about the... Uh, transformed by the march of time you can if you do a time lapse of doom antidotes videos you can see how how, how in search of lost time has worn him down as he as he continues to grapple with these books i have grappled with them too but i came out of the womb already looking worn and battered down so so it's not quite the same but anyway that is our mail uh, quite the variety i would say quite the variety and all uh, fairly immediate. All three of them fairly immediate. I think I had a bunch of reading about boring old Dante <laughs> to do tonight. I think I'm just going to sweep all that aside and just read these today and tonight. Just just read what I got in the mail. Read, read what you own. <laughs> read what the publishers send you. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do that. But anyway, that's the mail. Under 10 minutes, in and out, nobody gets hurt. And now I have to face... Oh, World War I of my own. <laughs> now I have to get my bossy little schnauzer to agree to go out in the rain. <sighs> and it can't be a short walk either, because she hasn't done number two. And she has an unbelievable capacity to just ignore that kind of thing, but I don't want her uncomfortable. I don't want her distended. I don't want her infected. So we're going to have to go out and get wet. 
I don't mind at all. It's actually, it's somber, but it's beautiful outside. So I don't mind at all. I, I, on days like today, or what tomorrow is predicted to be, those are the days when I really miss. Every once in a while, I have had a dog or dogs who were willing to tramp out in the woods and on the, the hillside in this kind of weather. And you might be shrinking with that, and sometimes I do too, but there is nothing like that. It is an, an amazing experience. But you've got to have dogs that are up for it. I'm not going to make a dog do that. So, And most of my beagles were, no, 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 no. They were perfectly comfortable to be curled up on the bed. Uh, peas in a pod, <laughs> just all like that. And you could tell when somebody brushed accidentally against somebody else because they'd be a little... <laughs> You could tell, you could hear that in the course of an hour, you could tell who was shifting where. Uh, but every once in a while, one or two of those beagles would be perfectly happy. It goes to show, you can never tell, even with siblings, who will be, where the personality differences will be. Every once in a while, one of those beagles was willing to go out with me in driving cold rain. Today, is a, it's a light, warm rain. The only kind of rain that Boston is ever going to get from now on. Light and warm. But in the past, when the weather was different, we, we would get driving cold rain, especially on the foothills of winter. And, oh my, going out in that, oh my, <laughs> it, it takes a bit, but it is, it's an experience that I haven't had in years. Frida wouldn't do it in a million years, in a million years. No, 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 no. Frida takes entirely after her unofficial godmother <laughs> in that she very much prefers civilized conversation with humans to any kind of contact with dogs. She's not a morning person, and she doesn't like tramping over miscellaneous wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? That you, you know, you take what you get. We'll at least have to go out for a little stroll. We don't have to cover ground. But anyway, that's what I'm facing next. But the mail hall is over. Not a bad mail hall. Certainly better than 50 books. <laughs> Yesterday's was a freak of nature. Uh, so I'll wrap this up for now, and I will be back. Thank you, Booktube.